Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Some of you might remember I already built a high power bench supply from server units before, but this time I'm using a different model that's even cheaper. These ones don't have quite as much power, but they're perfect for small to medium projects. For just $40, I can get a safe 24 volts at almost 1000 watts. And if you stick around to the end, I'll also show you how to stack a third unit to get 36 volts. First, we need to open the PSU. Be careful, the capacitors inside can still hold a dangerous charge even after unplugging. Always check the output with a voltmeter. If you still see voltage, discharge it safely with a resistor or just leave the probes connected until the reading drops into the millivolt range. Only once it's safe should you continue. Next, we need to isolate the negative terminal from the metal chassis. This step is critical if you want to connect two or more PSUS in series. If the negative is still tied to the case and the case is grounded, it will short the outputs or trip breakers. Uh, I check continuity with a multimeter between the negative output and the chassis. At this point it beeps, confirming they are connected. The first method is quick and simple. Electrical tape under the mounting area uh, where the PSU touches the case. And don't forget, you also need tape under the screws that hold the output terminals to the chassis. Those screws create a ground path. After applying it, I check again with the multimeter, and this time there's no beep, which confirms the negative is now isolated. This method works, but it's not very durable. Later in the video, I'll show you a much better way to do it. server uh, PSU, like the HP models are a hot swappable, so they won't power on by default. I enable mine with a 20 kilo ohm resistor on the sense pins and a jumper on the control line. Once plugged in, the fan spins, and sometimes it keeps running even after you unplug. That's intentional, uh, it cools hot parts and bleeds off stored energy safely. Keep watching to see how I install the resistor and jumper as neatly as possible right near the PCB. Doing it this way prevents them from being accidentally bent, broken or pulled loose.
After soldering, I always test with a voltmeter to make sure I didn't create a short or connect the wrong pins. Better to catch a mistake here than after powering on. To easily recognize my isolated PSUS, I always mark them with masking tape. Even with the marking, I still test every unit with a multimeter before connecting them in series. These are just good habits to avoid costly mistakes. Once plugged in, the fan should start spinning and the small green LED on the back should light up. That confirms the PSU is active. Now I start wiring the power supplies together. These output terminals are very thick and dissipate heat quickly, so I need to use a lot of heat to solder properly. That's why I use high quality silicone wires. Silicone insulation can handle high heat without shrinking or melting, which makes them, makes them perfect for this kind of job. I carefully solder the positive of the bottom PSU to the negative of the one above it, creating a proper series connection. Very important, I always leave my earth connection on the negative of the bottom PSU in the stack. This is the only ground you should ever use. Never connect the negative of the middle or top PSU to earth. If you do, you'll create ground loops and the upper PSU will no longer float. That can fry your electronics the moment you connect them to another grounded device, like a PCUSB port or any equipment with an earth reference. So remember, the bottom PSU negative uh, is the only safe ground point.
Now that the output wires are in place, I add a WAGO connector for testing and check the outputs with a voltmeter. The lower connection gives us 12 volts and the upper positive gives us 24 volts. If we add one of the winning buck converters from my last video, we can step that down to 5 volts or 3.3 volts, which makes it perfect for powering an ESP32 an Arduino, or really any microcontroller safely from the same supply. Now for the second method of isolation, I'm adding the third power supply, so this is a good time to switch to plastic washers. By using plastic washers on the mounting bolts, and also where the output connector touches the chassis, we isolate the negative from the case. This gives us a much more secure and durable isolation compared to just using tape. Here I'm testing the setup with a voltmeter and an ESP32 connected to my PC over USB. And as you can see, everything is spot on. The voltages are exactly where they should be. The ground reference is safe. Now for the bonus part, um, let's connect the third power supply. First, I add output positive terminals for each PSU, which gives us 12 volts, 24 volts, and later 36 volts. Then I wire the positive of the second power supply to the negative of the third, and add an output wire for the top unit.
To keep things neat, I use Wago connectors on the positives of all three PSU and label them 12, 24, and 36. Now let's test, and voila, we have a power supply capable of running almost any project. It can even be used for battery charging. It's safe to, to connect with other electronics without frying components, and it's pretty cheap for what it can do. And of course, this same method can be scaled up and replicated with the 1200 watt server PSUI showed in another video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to leave suggestions or ask questions in the comments. In an upcoming video, I'll be designing a proper box for this setup with safe outlets to make it plug and play and much easier to use. So stay tuned.